What's up guys? Welcome back. My name is Backen again and uh, you've probably seen a few of my videos. Today we're going to talk about how we can officially set up a protocol whenever we are running our head combination with the spine. Someone give me the introduction. Welcome back. So head in the combination of spine, how you can set this up, because you, I guess you all guys have seen this and you also read it in words. Uh, it's, for me, it, it took a long time before I really could understand how it worked properly and you know the theory um, compared to the practice. So today I'm gonna try to go directly to the scan. I will show you how you can set up this, set up this protocol and you can see the effect of using the ISO, the fix and the reference. And uh, hang on, let's go. Okay, we're live at the scanner and uh, I'm using 1.5 Tesla to demonstrate this uh, uh, position mode, the difference between ISO, reference and uh, fix mode. I'm starting with the head here. So the localizer is running now. And then I'm just positioning our T2 weighted just to demonstrate. And as you can see here, uh, it's position mode is at fix. I will show you why I'm using fix for the head and not ISO and not reference. So the difference is that if you're using ISO, that means that whenever you are moving your field of view, the, the blue line you see there will um, be moving with your field of view. So that means that the table will move within your field of view. So the table in the head will move a little bit up, a little bit down or I mean in and out. So that's unnecessarily because the head is uh, it's not that big area. So it's very local. So you should use uh, fix or reference bus, but I will recommend fix and I will explain why. Let's run this T2. So while the T2 is running, I'm uh, just uh, pull over a localizer for the cervical spine. So because of the time limit of today, I don't have time to do the whole spine. I'm just going to show you the difference whenever you're going from the head to the cervical spine because um, the, the practices will be the same when I, whenever it comes to the position mode. So we're using uh, this localizer and uh, I'm trying to just show you here that you can actually save, if you want to combine the, the head and the spine, you can save the localizer for the spine with the feet around 200 ISO. That means that whenever you are positioning the ISO at the head and you pull over this localizer, it will move downwards towards your feet 200 millimeter. So it will be safe at this and you don't have to, like whenever you open it, you have to move and, and uh, position it. So it will move automatically down towards your feet 200 millimeter. And let's run that one. So the head is finished here, just to demonstrate that one. And uh, I'm ready with uh, T2 weighted, as you see there, sagittal, number four in line. So I have to wait for the localizer. So everything at the spine, I'm using the ISO. It's because I want to be in the middle of the scan at all time. And this area is very big, so you cannot use reference or fix. It would be very difficult. Okay, I'm just going to position this T2 and let it go while I'm trying to demonstrate the difference between uh, these uh, three modes. So you have the opportunity to either do a head with a fix or reference, right? Because you don't want to use ISO because of the small table movements and the reshimming and stuff like that. So let's pull down the T2 and I will demonstrate. So we know that this T2 was positioned for the head and is uh, used as the fixed position mode. So let's see now. So you see the coronal, the blue line there, that means that that uh, window is active, right? So even though this is active and this is the localizer for the cervical spine, so the head sequence, in this case T2 weighted, positioned at the fixed mode, will stay there. You see, it will not, it would stay there. So if I do the reference, take a look now, that means that 
this sequence will now follow the isocenter to the cervical spine. So it's not wrong using the reference, but if you pull down a head sequence whenever you're having a, another localizer, another isocenter position, it will follow the new isocenter position. You see that? So this means that my, my field of view now is of course positioned ahead because it was at that area when I positioned it, but the isocenter is not following. The isocenter is still at the neck. So the orange box means you're scanning way out of isocenter, way out of range, so you will get very bad images. So if you use the fixed mode, it will remember the position you did on the head. You see here, I have to pull up or activate the head localizer for being able to run whenever I'm using the ref. So if I'm using a fix, you see here, it still remembers I um, will be in the head even though I'm using a different localizer at a different area. No matter what uh, window is active, either it's localizer for the cervical spine or the localizer for the head, it will remember the first uh, the head as I position as the first one. That's why I'm using the fixed mode in the combination with isocenter when it comes to the spine. Because of curiosity, I just want to check that since I was scanning that one. That's it for the difference between ISO reference and fixed mode. I know it's very difficult uh, seeing this the first time or you just have to uh, try it out and check it for yourself. So I hope uh, so far this video will explain to you how this works in practice because I it took really long time for me to really understand the usefulness between the fix and the reference. The ISO is easy because the field of view moves when you whenever you move in the yellow box or your field of view, so that's easy to understand. But I couldn't understand why the fix and the dif the difference between the fix and the ref until I saw this uh, head spine combination. That's why an example like this will be easy to to show in real life. Okay, I have a last tips for you guys today, which I find is very important, and I'm trying to use it at all time. Uh, I got these tips from uh, my good friend Aspen Anderson, which I also mentioned in my earlier video. He shares a lot of MR tips and tricks, and he's a good friend of mine, so uh, he is the real man behind uh, what you say, think outside the box. I already pulled down a localizer for the lumbar, it's number 5 in the line there. Let's run that one, and I'm going to rename the T2 for lumbar. And I'm just going to try to position that as a standard lumbar, and I will show you something cool now, soon. So I'm just going to angulate it in the, in the coronal plane. So remember, whenever you are doing MR, you should uh, angulate it in two planes. At least. Okay. In the front there, you see there are some coil elements. So that means that I have, I'm using a body coil in the front there. So I'm using a body 18. And I will show you how I'm positioning that coil pretty soon. So why do I bothering using that coil in the front. So I'm going to show you this image pretty soon. Why? And the difference between using it and not using it. So you can also go in here to check if the coil is on or off or check directly at the at the window as, as shown there. So let's scan this one and we just call it for body front just to give it a name so we remember the difference. And then we're going to use the same sequence now, but just turning off the coils. And I'm going in here, miscellaneous, and I'm also uh, selecting the coil uh, select mode and uh, take it off, auto coil select off. This is because if I'm like moving a little bit the field of view now, the coil will be 
activate it again. So um, that's why I'm just making sure that this test it's totally off. And of course, we're not going to move the field of view because we're going to do the scan the this, this same as possible, right? So let's scan this one. And we're going to check the difference. So this is the first one with the body front on. You see there, the signal is homogeneous through the whole body. I'm just gonna, and that's the, the new one. Uh, no body front. So the middle one is with body front and the first one is not. So as seen there, you can see that there's a very dark area in the front compared to the middle image where you have the body front on. So you have a much more homogeneous signal intensity through the whole spine. So uh, that's the main difference between uh, those two. And I really recommend you guys to use the body front uh, at all time if possible. But of course, if the patient has uh, claustrophobic or is claustrophobic, I would try to, of course, avoid to do that. Okay, let's continue a little bit because uh, within the next few minutes, I will show you how I'm positioning the coil. But just, just want to show you one more example uh, compared to my healthy volunteer. I was told that uh, to say that my healthy volunteer is uh, like a normal sized person and uh, well, I will get kicking ass next day when I'm really releasing this video. No, I'm just kidding with you guys. This example shows you that uh, this uh, person is uh, thick, right? Because we have a lot of fat here and a lot of fat in the stomach here. So the main point is that you have the coil elements in the back here and the position vertebral body or the spine is far away from the elements. So the signal intensity will kind of drop because you have the the, the the coils behind here so using a body 18 in the front will give you a more homogeneous signal intensity throughout the body whenever you have a thick person like like this one so that was just another example why you should use the body 18 especially on thick patients so i'm positioning the coil like uh, not landscape but i'm just positioning it as portrait and I don't use time to fasten the coil in the table. I'm just positioning it in the stomach like that and making sure that the leads and everything are okay. And then I'm just positioning the patient and uh, go on with the exam. It's very fast and efficient, so it's no excuse like, oh, we have to use another coil here. No, it doesn't take a long time at all. And you can see in the example that it makes a whole difference in the image quality. Be the radiographer who wants to deliver good images. Be proud of that at all time. So, of course, when you're doing a spine, you also most likely have to do some transversal. I have a few tips here. Uh, it's also easy to fall in the pitfalls. The first image you see here, there will be a lot of information upcoming now. So try to hold on, or you can, of course, do a rewind and pause this video and listen to what I'm saying now, okay? With the body 18 in the front, using a saturation band, it's okay. There's no respiratory artifact here. I see the image is okay. You see the dark area in the front here is because the saturation band is at the anterior part of the body. Okay. And then you turn off the body 18 in the front, but you're still using the saturation band. You see the vertebral body here is dark also in the transversal plane as seen in the sagittal plane which makes sense because if you have the coil in the front you will get a better or more homogeneous signal intensity you can use the body front and use ap direction as a phase encoding as i'm showing there but remember to use the saturation band or else watch this if you're not using saturation band you will more likely get a respiratory artifact in the phase direction in this case of anterior, posterior, or AP. And these artifacts, breathing artifacts, will go through your image. So you will have a suboptimal images, and it's not great at all. However, if you don't want to use the saturation band, remember to turn off the 
elements in the front but the pitfalls will be then that you will have a not homogeneous signal intensity as you could have as shown in an earlier image so i what i usually do i do right left okay i do right left with 100 percent phase over sampling to avoid uh, the fold over here i'm using the bod 18 in the front with saturation band actually you can turn off the saturation band here because you are having and the face encoding direction and the right left so i don't know why i did the saturation band in this test hmm. okay and then you can also use the, use the right left with the no body coil in the front works great no respiratory artifacts because it's going right left but as seen here the vertebral body is also not homogeneous here as it should be so as my conclusion if you want to use right left I'm, I'm using right left you should use it uh, if you're using body 18 you should use it right left as seen there I don't think you need the saturation bad at all I'm just, I don't know why I did on this test but I'm very sure you can turn off the saturation band. And also remember, if you are at the 3T scanner, a saturation band will also lead to SAR issue. So just keep that in mind. So if you want to stay with the AP direction, you should use it with the saturation band because you saw the respiratory artifact, the breathing artifact. But remember to turn on elements because you will get a more homogeneous signal intensity throughout the image. All right, guys, I hope you learned something new today. I guess many of you guys already know this, but there are also people who don't know this. And uh, that's great because uh, we gotta learn from each other, right? And uh, it might be sound, sound easy, but I also recommend you guys to like put the coil in the front whenever you're doing a, a spine imaging. Uh, you saw the images, it's different in quality. And uh, like I said, Aspen Anderson, he's the one who taught me this and uh, he really showed me some images because at first I thought, oh man, really? Does this really work? and uh, yeah believe me it does work so uh, he was right i was wrong so today i no matter what i try to use the coils in the front when i'm doing a spine imaging except when the patient is really claustrophobic and i do not want, want to have a lot of coils in up on this body that that's the one i uh, try to not have the coils on but regarding that so without further ado i uh, do not forget to uh, write a comment if you have any questions and also uh, give a thumb up if you like this video and do not forget to subscribe and uh, ring the notification bell because uh, you will get a notification whenever i'm posting new stuff and uh, you will get to be updated with my videos so until next time i'll see you around remember to stay safe in these days so peace out